What's going on, guys? And welcome to another episode of Nerds Podcast. Dot Tech. Where this week, you guessed it, we're talking, I mean, Apple. <clears throat> Apple then? Apple. Oh. Apple, it happened today. They they did stuff. Mm-hmm, they announced stuff. Good job, Apple. Um, yeah. You get to pat yourself on the back. How expected. Oh. I, uh, surprise. No, oh, I know. <laughs> but... There are some twists and turns. We will dive deep after this break. Cue the music. Oh no. Oh no. We're Ah. 98.68 gigs free. Welcome back. So, John. The magic hands. The magic hands of the music that we didn't hear. Magic beer hands. Mm. What have you been up to? So what is up? Uh, just a lot of work. A lot of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of work. Nothing too exciting. Um, yeah, just non-exciting work. Just the normal grind, unfortunately. Any new tech gear? Yeah, I mean, well, since the last podcast, it's like, man, <laughs> it's, it's been a while, so of course. <laughs> There's like, a longer us, list. Yeah, we're top two. Tech nerds, top two was top know. two. Um, so I'm sure I spoke of the OLED since the last time. Mm, I hadn't even seen it. Maybe, maybe, uh, perhaps. Uh, so I got the OLED, got a 4K AVR, a Marantz to go with it. So I got the 4K 60 and the HDR, Dolby Vision, all that grand jazz. Since my Pioneer couldn't support all that. Um, uh, yeah, got a uh, new solid state drive for games. Ooh. Samsung Evo eight sixty plus. Oh, okay. I want to say okay. it is. Is that the newest one? Maybe it's nine sixty plus, or is that that might be there? I'm not twos. And then I got the uh, Western Digital Black one terabyte M dot two. Ooh, for production stuff for the podcast. Nice. Yes, just for you guys. Yeah, so that's just my new production pipeline is the M.2 for crazy speed, dedicated SSD for gaming, and then I still have my RAID 0 SSDs for my general OS and programs, and then all the like 30 terabytes for Plex. Yeah. And I'm looking, I'm looking <laughs> at right now the um, 14 terabyte Ultra Star. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the next one. Because I was looking at Western Digital Golds originally, but their storage doesn't go that high, and I don't think they really make them anymore, because mm -hmm. the prices are ridiculous for them. So, yeah, it's the HDSG, HSGT? HGST. HGST. Yeah. Ultra Star, 14 terabyte, which is still a Western Digital Drive, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. one's uh, currently leading the pack for the next hard drive. Nice. For storage. Yeah, once I fix my Blu-ray drive, which I bricked, <laughs> trying to hack, do hacked firmware update to do s s new firmware to it, and I bricked it. So we'll see how that goes. We can try to fix it. We'll try. We'll have updates. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll see how we do. Uh, how's uh, What's new in your tech uh, life uh, here, Eric? Just two little small things. Uh, picked up a GoPro Fusion while Whoa. those guys were on sale. On ridiculous sale. Yeah, half off, basically. Oh, um, I was so lucky. I wanted that for so long. Yeah. I'm so jealous. Took that guy camping, so get to play with that in Premiere, see how, uh, see what editing I can do. How was that actually for recording while you're camping? Because it doesn't have a screen, right? Oh, yeah, it's super nice because you don't have to point it at anything. Oh, that's true. And then, is, did it still have, I remember when we went camping with your old one, it had like the voice commands. Is it still mm, the voice commands? It does. Oh, it has nice. voice commands, GPS. Um, basically everything under the sun, mm. fully featured. And I got, uh, the interesting thing is you have to have dual SD cards. Yeah. So I got dual 128 gig SD Ooh, cards. That'll do it. For it. And so it gives me like five hours of record time. Does the like battery that. last that long? No, God, no. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you can record for five hours. Doesn't mean it'll be like powered on for that no. long. No, but you can, it, it does have... Uh, replaceable batteries. Is it two it. batteries? Or one battery? One battery. One battery? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, and I only charged it once over the whole weekend. Wow, not bad. 
Yeah. So it was Not pretty cool. Bad. And got the uh, AMD 5700 XT Anniversary Edition. Oh, shit, you did. I forgot about that. Oh. Got the thing that overclocked new, over that 2 new gigahertz. R, that new RDNA architecture. Yeah. Ooh. It's a nice little graphics card. Did a full water cool on that guy with an EK block. Mm. Damn, this thing of beauty. Oh, it looks good. It looks yeah. really good. I saw the Radeon 7 in that beast, and it treats me well. It treats me well enough. Like, uh, but all I'm really playing is like Counter Strike and Sea of Thieves. So like Counter Strike, I'll get like 500 frames. <laughs> but no, I mean most of it's a little. It hovers a little under 300, a little over 300 most of the time. Depends on like what you're looking at, how it's doing. I think it's just how the like, game engine is. Yeah. And then uh, Sea of Thieves, I max out settings at 1440p. I hover in like 70 to like 120 ish frames in That's that area. Good. It depends on the yeah. time of day. Now, in the 4K, when I bust it out onto this guy, it's typically about 60. I've seen it drop into the like low 40s and okay. see it gone up to like 90. But yeah, it's treating me well. That's nice. I mean, they're good graphics cards, especially for oh, what yeah. they cost. Oh, yeah. So, speaking exactly. of. Uh, New hardware. The podcast will be going under some changes. That's uh, true. So we've been exploring new avenues of exploration and directions that we can pivot the podcast kind of into. We kind of expanded a little bit into some different ways. So you'll see some changes. Yeah, or a lot of it. We'll see. Yeah. See how it rolls out and what we can prepare. You're going to see some interesting, fun stuff. Uh, feedback is always appreciated positive feedback <laughs> not you guys are liars so i appreciate anything that you guys well, if you guys know. want to see something we're happy to consider it we're always here to listen uh yeah but uh sean's kind of heading that stuff up since uh i've got two kids at home i know what is this responsibilities or something i, I, know, uh, I know but there has been a lot of big changes also over at apple Today, well, what, <laughs> what, what is there ever a big change in an Apple product? I mean, come on, like every five years, there's it a was big supposed change. to be a segue, a big change. Give me the <laughs> segue, bro. There's been some moderate changes over in the Apple lineup. Yes, since there, it is. there's a moderate refresh once again. Well, yeah, and, so, uh, yeah, and, how that uh, side spin, it's what we're gonna see from all manufacturers from this point forward. Ish. You're going to see small incremental changes both on the OS side and on hardware side. Yeah, well, I feel like there's been a lot of stagnation in design because Apple pushes no one because they release the same phone every single year. But then, like, a lot of phones are now, like, sandwiched glass with, you know, a metal in between them, uh, which is unfortunate. But, yeah, like, Galaxy S10, you know, hasn't changed dramatically since the S8. Yeah. I really think. It, it really hasn't. I think they've dramatically reduced bezels and done new new and better screens, did the whole punch, did some other but things overall, there. But overall, but it's full refresh. Yeah, you know, a lot of phones are still just sandwiched glass. Yeah. But then you also look at like all the Chinese phones that are doing like pop-up selfie cams or like the Asus Zenfone 6 that has like the rotating flip camera to mm -hmm. use the main cameras to the selfie cams or like the... Oppo Reno that has like the shark fin selfie cam that pops up like a lot of the full screen designs or like the Mi Mix 3 that has like the slider kind of like the Blackberry had mm -hmm. where it's a slide up mechanism like a manual slide. Uh, there's still like a lot of really interesting and cool design stuff especially coming out of China or like the, the Huawei Mate X yep. and that yep. stuff. So there's like a lot of innovative things happening it's just a lot of people like especially in the u.s just play it very safe because there's no one really pushing boundaries like the yeah. chinese phones i well i heard something interesting specifically on this topic where uh they feel that the products can't be as pushed as hard and as far as they could in other countries because america is a lot less forgiving uh, reliability wise if a product gets released and it is not perfect and there are flaws or there's yeah, yeah. issues with it then 
it could be a death sentence for a number of companies in America at least whereas you know when they're on their home turf of uh, you know South Korea or China China then they can do those kind of crazier things and people are okay with it not being 100% perfect uh, because they know it's bleeding edge they know it's something different they know it's not going to be perfect every time so uh, it, it's just an interesting thing to consider you know just being in a different market yep. versus the rest of the world yeah so yeah hopefully we'll see more interesting things I mean yeah. the the Mi Mix 4 is supposed to get announced later this year and that thing's as like the number one thing on my radar right now because it's supposed to have a 108 megapixel camera from Samsung Jesus yeah yeah <laughs> That and like a whole load of ludicrous things, so that wants to keep my interest. But besides all those, we have some updates from Apple, uh, which are all positive. I think everything moved in a forward direction, everything's an upgrade, everything's better. Uh, but let's talk about it. So, uh, where do you want to start with the, the well, lesser <coughs> products, not diving into the phones, well, maybe the watch, iPad? Yeah, we're gonna basically go in order how they kind they of announced it. it. Yep, let's talk um, about it. So the first notable thing that they kind of talked about was Apple TV+, Plus, which is their kind of Netflix subscription service. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've got a, just a couple exclusives. Uh, they've only got a couple of things right now that I've seen. Well, well, I guess they have all exclusives, right? Do they have like any regular programming that's not exclusive? That I don't know. I think I it's ha- all original programming. I haven't programming. really dug a whole lot into it, mostly because it hasn't had anything super compelling. But it, right now it's priced at four ninety nine for a family plan. What that means specifically in Apple terms, I'm not exactly sure. That's probably like a literal Apple family plan. Like someone has to be in your like probably, family plan yeah. on the App Store, yeah, to be able to be included in that. More than so like, like you probably couldn't share it with me because I'm not no. part of your family. Probably not. So it was, but four ninety nine is a really good price. Oh, I thought it was too. I thought oh, yeah. it was a great place for them to start, especially with the amount of content that they have at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, especially with the way that Netflix has been slowly increasing prices over the past couple months oh, yeah. uh, slash years. So it it kind of puts them in a pretty good position to say people go, oh, that's actually not too bad. Well, I think like, the, it's just the big try. thing is on. <clears throat> they announced that any new Apple product purchases, so iPhone iPad, um, MacBook, uh, that you would get a free year of. Where is that? I got there, it. There you go. Uh, you get a free year of the Apple TV Plus. Yeah. With that. Which so I think is great too. Yeah, that's kind of your gateway yeah. drug. So you can like see the shows, <clears throat> get addicted to the shows, and, you know, want to renew and have things for the next seasons. It's kind of like be an instant user base where people will be involved in the service without paying for it yeah and it, it really shows it would give you pretty good metrics of how interested people would be in the tv shows <laughs> because it's free but that's also like i feel like it kind of will destroy their metrics because they can have a show and they'd be like yeah two million people watch this show and then it's like you know forty thousand people paid to watch this show because every person that buys an iphone will have access to the show well, so they'll yeah. be like oh we have a shitload of people watching the show. No one's paying to watch the show because it's all included. Because they all, they're all watching the show because they bought an iPhone and now they get to watch the show. But if you see that many people watching a show, especially consecutively, you know, over a period of time, then you're going to see that they're going to stick with that service. Yeah, so that's and that's recurring renov- yeah, renovate. Yeah, so I feel like after the first year, probably we'll really find out. Like, well, yeah, but that gives them honest metrics use, of who's oh, yeah. interested in TV show. Yeah, and using honestly, their base. yeah, and it allows them to build up uh, that customer base and expose them to it. So then year two, all those people will be on renewals. Yeah. And they'll be talking up. That's like, oh, yeah, it's surprisingly good. You should try it. Yeah, and if any of their shows get, like, you know, Emmy nominations or Oscar nominations, like with Netflix stuff. Because, I mean, uh, Roma won um, last year for Oscars, and that was Netflix. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah it'll be very interesting. I think, the like, the most direct competitor at that price point is Disney+, Plus, which launches in November okay. at $7. Oh, Still a little on the steep side, especially. I mean, well, but, the, the difference there though is they have like Fox's catalog oh, and okay. Disney's catalog. Okay. So like, 
you pay seven dollars a month and you get basically everything Disney's ever done, uh, and you get all of the Simpsons. You get everything. Like you have a giant Fox backlog and a Disney backlog, and then you can also do a combined uh, subscription. I think for fifteen bucks a month, that gives you Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. Okay. So they have some bundles of additional services and products, but that's like the thing for the Apple Plus is actually buying it without getting it free is there's no existing properties. It's just their original programming Yeah. versus like Disney Plus. You're like, oh, now I have 4K HDR of like all this ex- existing, like every Marvel movie, all this classic animation, all the Pixar, and then like the Simpsons and a lot of those other properties. So... There's, like, immediate things you're familiar with that you actually want to watch, where on Apple TV Plus, it's kind of like buying in to see how it is to things you won't be familiar with but could be incredible. Yeah. It's like, it's something that you... Well, can you only watch it on Apple devices? Like, you probably need an Apple TV to watch it, huh? It's a good question. More than likely... More than likely. So I actually can't, it's not even an option for me. But I'm like, I'd be interested at five bucks a month with no contract to like try it out for a month or two and just like watch the shows and, you know, do all that stuff. But if I can't. I can hook you up with an Apple TV. But I hate them. (laughs) 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 We'll see. I mean, maybe. Uh, Apple TVs are the worst, but Apple. That would be interesting. Yeah, maybe they'll have an app. <laughs> Apple, if you're listening, you need to create a professional version of your Apple TV product, because yeah. so many consumers love your product, but your product sucks when you have to install more than like three of them. It yeah. sucks on a network perspective. It sucks on a control perspective. Just. Get your shit together. Yeah. Give us network control. Give us more control over the network. I'll be happy. Yeah, and have the base models not just like support standard Dolby Digital. Like, and that's it. Because transcoding literally everything that exists is super annoying. But yeah. that's uh, no Apple TV announced. No, no that Apple comes TV. from uh, two Plex servers. So, yeah. yeah we, we, we have a distorted perspective on yeah. the world uh so okay so that's apple tv plus um <laughs> i won't get to watch it because i don't own an apple device but it's interesting price point's great people being able to have it for free if they buy a device is amazing yep. to get the user base up and they'll probably be very successful in the coming years and it'll be very interesting to see uh what happens with the shows because they're i know they're spending a ton of money on it yeah i mean they got the cash yeah, Jason Momoa right. has a show. I think Jennifer Aniston has mm-hmm. a show. Yeah. Um, Haley Seinfeld. A C- C- Haley. I want to say Seinfeld. It's not Seinfeld. Um, but she's in a in a show as well. Uh, she's currently rumored to play Ho- the Hawkeye's daughter oh. in an, in the Hawkeye Disney Plus show. Okay. See, man, I'm more interested in the Mandalorian. <laughs> this fucking Star Wars show than I am in anything on Disney Plus. Uh, I, I anything on Apple Plus. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Apple so, Plus. So that was cool. Wow. Next, so we we spent way too much time on a single lineup. <laughs> yeah, we got. But I mean, rock. it's it's cool. All right. So the next thing they talked about was the iPad Pro Seven Generation. Regular iPad. Not iPad. Pro. Sorry. Sorry. Yep. Regular iPad. The lineup got a little confusing. So the uh, iPad Seven Generation, mm-hmm. normal. Plain vanilla iPad. Yep, 10.2 inch screen to 7.9. Little yep. screen upgrade, a little bit bigger. Yeah, uh, hits 500 nits, not too bad. Uh, 2160 by 1620 resolution. Uh, what is it? 2160 by 1620. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> That's, it's cool, though, but Dude. also it still has Touch ID, so it still has a fingerprint scanner. Yeah, it's super familiar. They also added the expansion port so you can use Apple's smart uh, keyboard. Mm-hmm. With uh, it. supports the Apple Pencil. But like first the, gen. The first gen. First gen, not second gen. So that's the one that has like the lightning port on like the eraser side to charge it. Yeah. Where you have to like, plug yeah. it into the iPad at the bottom to yep. charge it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's um, some interesting things that they talked about were they have specific gestures for iPad OS uh, that make it a little more unique 
the differentiated from uh, iOS. Mm -hmm. So it, m more of that stuff was kind of talked about during the spring keynote during WWDC. Yep. So I suggest going back and kind of catching up on that stuff if you want to know specifics. So the really important thing, I have two things. One, the price, $329 yeah, that, for an iPad. Yeah, it caught me off guard. Uh, I feel silly for spending... Uh, 175 on a little Asus tablet, I would have spent twice as much to get an iPad. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a, as long as you want to spend that much money, it's substantially <clears throat> better. Oh. Yeah, I was World's in better. my head before I saw that slide. I'm like, yeah, iPad minis are like 280 to yeah. like, yeah, 300, maybe 350. And I'm like, yeah, and a full-size iPad is 499. Like, that was the in my head I'm like that, that yeah. is what it's priced at and then it's all the slides at 329 I'm like oh my god at that price like nothing can touch it great price great product nothing crazy special yeah, crazy amount of optimized yeah. applications uh, it only has AC wireless which is fine um, yeah. so the thing that I found really interesting is over the past I don't know how many years that I've tracked Apple products They've always compared themselves to themselves. They've always said not twice, always, but recently. The, that's what I respect the, about them now. For the most part, they've always compared themselves to themselves. They say this was twice as fast as last year's iPad at gaming. It's twice the amount of battery as last year's. You know, it, yeah. That's how they kind of. Yeah, in the in, in the Tim Cook era, they have they have done that very very well. Yeah, but now what was really interesting during the iPad is they compared themselves to the most popular PC that's purchased. Mm. So I thought one misleading, and you can't compare a those types of even an ipad pro like can't get directly compared to a it, pc even I, though it's a thousand dollars or more and that's where it's it's super weird to do that comparison but i thought it was really interesting how they're trying to position themselves as a replacement for that home computer that you are sharing with your kids mm. yes super cheap you know asus or samsung lenovo you know Thing that you got on sale Brock Friday at Best Buy. Yeah. You know, trying to say, okay, hey, we're a replacement for that because we are faster. We are better. Look at us for that next replacement. I thought it was interesting note, uh, just some of the kind of those types of small things in marketing I find really interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you have like a lot of standard internet use that is literally like Chrome and Facebook. Yeah, that I mean, what's all. the point of having anything else? At yeah, that point? <laughs> like, that's my whole thing is just those two things. I mean, maybe you want like a bigger screen or maybe you like a physical keyboard. You know, maybe you're less intuitive to touch screens and those things. You know, they're incredibly easy to use. But yeah, generally, like a lot of default computing is Chrome because everyone just uses yeah. the Internet. And yeah, Facebook, yeah, Instagram. Yeah, social media, email. Yep, that's about it. Email, it's all available as apps right there. You're good to go. Yeah. Um, all right. So the next thing that they talked about was the Apple Watch Series 5. Series 5. This had actually quite a few updates. Um, first, kind of the minor ones is they, they added and brought back a couple different styles. So it comes in, obviously, the standard aluminum. Now 100% recycled aluminum. That was an interesting point that they really drove home multiple times. Yeah. That the products that they're offering in aluminum are made from 100% recycled aluminum. Yeah. Um, they also are offering a titanium, a stainless steel, and a ceramic. Yeah, ceramic, super sick. Yeah, the titanium is cool. It comes in a gray and black, you know, well, a gray titanium color. Um, yeah. They have a built-in... Oh, man. Just so I can pimp it, because I always do, even though it's two years old. Essential phone in my pocket. Titanium rim. Ceramic. <laughs> back. <laughs> with no camera bump. It's still like... I love this hardware still so much. But yeah, all titanium, no aluminum or steel. And ceramic. Not glass. Love it. It's 
cool phones. Just, just speaking of titanium and, st- and ceramic, but yes. Um, <clears throat> so they have included built-in compass. Which uh, is cool. Yeah, I super like. cool. It does. Ele- it shows you elevation, direction. Uh, uh, what was it? Pitch change or whatever. Whenever you're hiking, uh, a couple other cool little things. Uh, the same, if not better, battery life, which is including an always-on display. So it's yep. a new type of tech called LTPO, which basically allows the screen to refresh anywhere between 60 and 1 hertz. Yeah, because when you're in the ambient mode, you don't need to actually show anything. Just show a tick. Yep. Tick. So I thought it was pretty cool. Um, and you get the same 18 hours of usage. Uh, and to be honest, even the Apple Watch that I wear uh, as my daily driver, I wear it two days and charge it at night on the second day. Oh, yeah. That's how, actually, this one is. Well, it's interesting. So the watch I regularly wear is Hugo Boss wear. Um, but it's based off the Fossil platform. Mm-hmm. But my Fossil Gen 3 that I have uh, is nowhere close to as good as this, which doesn't make sense because it's the same platform. Yeah. But this one, same thing. I can, yeah, I can get two days out of this thing easy. Especially when I take it off at night because I'll do that. I'll come home. I'll sit down on my computer right here. I'll take it off, leave it next to my TV. And at the end of the of a work day, it's at like 65% still. Yep. And then I just like pick it up in the morning and it's still at the exact same battery. And I just wear it again. Like I've probably gone three days and this one's worked fine. And then the fossil, like the straight fossil, I like... Eh, a day period like huh. that's it and then it's so it, it just goes to show that it watches are getting better and it all depends on what you get yeah uh, and who you're getting it from what their supports are like so oh yeah now let's talk about a couple new things I'm gonna skip down to the bottom a little bit um, they're offering an iPhone trade-in program uh, which you get a pretty significant significant amount of money off a new phone mm-hmm. uh, if you trade in an older phone. Uh, or you can do monthly payments. Uh, and for the iPhone 11 Pro Max Plus, whatever it's called. Max. Yeah. Max. Uh, it's like 30 bucks a month for the... Twelve hundred dollar phone. Yeah, for standard storage. Yeah, <clears throat> so I, that that's actually better than what like Verizon or Sprint will offer you. Well, Verizon's monthly payment thing is terrible. Yeah, um, I can do monthly payments through Google Fi as a carrier, and that one's really good because they also discount your phones on top of it. But that's like a minor carrier. It's not something common. Yeah. I think the Play Store, you can do that as well. But it's interesting that they like bring it up on slides. It, well, it's interesting that they're bringing that stuff more in-house versus relying on carriers to do that stuff, mm-hmm. which is starting to lead me down the road of, are they eventually going to be offering their own cell service, kind of like Google Fi? Yeah, that's true. I doubt it because they don't really have the back end. I think necessary to do that stuff, but maybe who knows? I mean, Fi is a MVNO, so it uses Sprint and T-Mobile. So it's not like they have a cellular network. They just have a layer within T-Mobile and Sprint, which they're merging. So that'll be like an even more integrated and better layer, which will be really cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Apple could do the same thing through Verizon or AT and T, and if anything, I'd guess AT and T because they probably have the best relationship mm-hmm. since they have that. Uh, all that OG original oh, yeah. iPhone contract oh, yeah. stuff where it was only on AT and T back yeah. in the day. Oh yeah, yeah, could be interesting. So, iPhone eleven. All right, the real shit. So, <sighs> so no more XR, no more R. It's just an iPhone eleven, which is not the replacement for the uh, iPhone eleven. Is not the replacement for the ten or the ten X. Is the replacement for the ten R, which. The the naming convention change really kind of made it interesting during the keynote because they started talking about iPhone 11. I was listening to them talk about the specs. I didn't feel impressed. 
I felt kind of like, eh. Because it's not like the real iPhone 11. It's the budget iPhone 11. Yeah, and that's where the way that the naming convention came across, I was like, oh, this is what we're offering this year. And I was like... And they spent a lot of time on it as cool. well. And the majority of their phone press conference of that section was on the standard 11. And that's where, once they got to the 11 Pro, I'm like, oh, well, that would probably be the one that's more interesting and that I would be interested in. So it's 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 interesting how that psychology works and it, on the naming convention change. But it's also interesting that the iPhone XR, they made it a point to say it was their best-selling iPhone. But they still, they're like, oh, this is our best-selling model. But we still want to change names so that it doesn't seem less than the standard model. So they like rebranded it, even though all their sales data showed it didn't actually matter. And people didn't perceive it as a lesser model because it was still the most sold. Yeah. So it's like, do you really need to do that? Because it still sold the best out of everything. So it's well, like selling the best okay. and seeing less than are Seeming, different arguments. Yeah. Because I see it as less than. I mean, it still is, but but it's just, it may only be what I can afford. Yeah. You know, and that's where. If I see iPhone 11, I see an iPhone 11 Pro. And that was the other thing. The way that they marketed the iPhone 11 Pro made me feel, oh, I need the Pro because I can shoot cool videos. I'm a pro. Yeah, there's like, oh, this is for the more sophisticated user. Exactly. It was like, oh, that's <laughs> desirable to me. So I'm weird. sophisticated. Um, so iPhone 11 comes in six different colors. I'm not going to list them off. You can look those up yourself. They're um, fun, though. They're very fun. Oh, yeah. Fun. Yeah, very colorful. Uh, 6.1 inch display at uh, 625 nits. Interesting resolution. 1792 by 828. Not even 1080p. Yeah, which is the they, same screen as the XR. But they advertise it as HD. It, it was weird. Oh, um, regular HD, 1280, 720. Oh, that's true. Yeah. God, I hate... Full HD. Full HD is 1080p. It's so stupid. HD, as an advertisement, is 1280, 720. This is why we hate AV sometimes. Because <laughs> um, then we have UHD, which is the 38... Um, 38, 40 by 2160. Yeah, and then there's 4K, 4096, 2160. Yeah. Yeah, all that jazz. So they also advertise Dolby Atmos support. Yeah. Uh, it, on, this is so. When I first saw these slides about the speakers, I honestly thought they were showing speakers behind the screen, like LG does. Yes. Or Sony does. And I thought, fuck, that's cool. But then you realize, no. They're just doing fancy DSP processing for panning stuff across. But did they the actually field. say that it had stereo speakers? Like they use the earpiece as a speaker? They have for a couple of years. Okay, just making sure. And if you look at the specs online, uh, it shows speaker at the headset and speaker at the bottom. Uh, so it, it's really interesting how they... I have a feeling they may get sued over that because <laughs> well, if they it's extremely misleading. But if they, if as long as they decode the Dolby Atmos codec, I mean Dolby Atmos can be decoded stereo. It's just and, a codec. It doesn't mean it's like multi-channel surround. Well, I know. It but, just means it's a codec. I know. Trust me. I, it's, there's a lot of phones that do Dolby Digital Plus. I understand that, but the other ninety-eight percent who yeah. go out and buy this phone aren't going to look at it and go, oh, well, it's only got two speakers, so how is this Atmos? Yeah. They're going to go, oh, sweet, Atmos. Well, I think I've most heard that people, before. Uh, most people probably don't know what Atmos is. We know what Atmos is. It's awesome. You know what Atmos is, podcast. Damn right. It's object-based surround sound. It's fucking amazing. But it's also a codec. So that's it decodes that codec. Yeah. So, uh... They have, it has two lenses, uh, which I thought was really interesting. They have yeah. a standard uh, lens, standard zoom lens, and then an ultra, ultra wide. wide. Yeah. Instead of doing a standard and a zoom. 
Yeah. Which was is, super interesting. interesting. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if they're going to have backlash over that. Uh, I think it's kind of cool. Some of the effects that they were doing in the camera app, they must have people just asking for that type of macro. Yeah, I feel like the ultra wide is probably more in demand than the telephoto. The only thing is like the uh, distortion that you can get from the ultra wide. Yeah, and I saw edges, some of that in some see. of the uh, videos and stuff that they showed. Yeah, but I think it's much more useful than the oh, telephoto. I, I agree. Yeah. But then if you want the telephoto, that's your like reason to go up to the pro. And that's what brings us to another point is that it becomes a delineation between, oh, I've lost what I have now. I've lost telephoto. And so now I have to have a pro to gain that feature back. Um, so the other things that they've added obviously have been uh, future will be night mode to compete with Google and their night site. Yep. Um, the more interesting thing is they say it's automatic versus Google. You have to enable it yeah, manually. Yeah, enable it. Um, the, they have a new chip, obviously, the A13 Bionic. They say it's the fastest CPU and GPU in a smartphone. Uh, it supports Wi-Fi 6. Uh, it comes in a 64, 128, and 250 gig, six, 256 gig, gig storage yeah. options. Uh, still no... Expendable storage for you guys still holding out. Yep. And IP68 rated down to two. Uh, so interesting thing for yeah. a lot of these though is like, I mean, it's kind of still the same way I felt for many years now for them is all of this is like IP68. Oh, welcome to the last five years. <laughs> like multiple cameras. Welcome to the last. Five years, like it's the same stuff that they've had. Yeah, uh, most of the updates have been software. Screen. Yeah, let's be honest. So it's like a lot of these things that are new. I still feel like are catch up, but I feel like well, they've had all this stuff for the most part. Well, yes. Yeah, so, so something like night mode. So you have like a Pixel Three A at three ninety nine against an iPhone XS at a thousand dollars. And you have a low light photography comparison, and the three A destroys it, and that's on a billboard. Then they're like, "Well, I guess we need a night mode." And now they have a night mode because they get annihilated yeah. at low light photography. Uh, so, as it's still reactionary from them for yeah. everything they do, it's like, you know, as I and I'm sure everyone else is aware, it's like. You know, they did something incredible and introduced the iPhone, said it's years ahead of its time, and then they just stopped being years ahead of their time, and then they just stuck with it until they got passed up, and now they've just keep on reacting to the market every single year on, oh, now people like big phones because we're losing market share and Samsung's getting a shitload, so, now let's make big phones. But these are things that we Oh, we've, we don't have... We have bad low light, and they have really good low light. Now we have to add no light. Oh, they have an ultra wide camera and a telephoto. Well, I guess now we have to add more cameras. But this stuff is we've we beat this stuff to death. I know, honestly. On this I podcast. know. I'm sorry. And it doesn't matter if they're playing catch up. It doesn't matter if they're being progressive or not. As long as they are creating, honestly, as long as I'm getting a product. That I don't feel like stuff is being taped and glued yeah. onto the side of it just to say I have this feature too, then I'm fine. As long as this stuff is being implemented with thought and yeah. being strategic and like, hey, we're doing this, but we're doing it this way, this reason, yeah. and that it all ties together, then great because that's actually what i see these as though is they actually catch up very well and they put them on a very competitive and even playing field for what's been released this year especially at the 699 price point oh yeah the price uh, point's pretty good for the standard iphone 11 so a lot of these things are very standard now it's nothing new or nothing really impressive on its own but it's very well done as a complete package to make it extremely competitive with what's on the field and on the market. So I don't think they're really behind in anything. I think they're at par with pretty much everything we expected out of them uh, and for what's currently on the market and what their direct competitors are. 
Uh, so for what they've released this year, I feel like they've done that catch up and they're pretty much exactly where the market is uh, for pretty much everything on here. I mean, it's well, still it, a low resolution screen, but that's really so it. The, uh, the way I see Apple, and this is the last time we're going to talk about this, I swear. Right? Forever. We'll keep talking about it. Okay. Is Apple doesn't have a huge lineup. They keep it that way for a reason. Mm -hmm. They also can't offer the best of everything. And so I feel like they're doing their best to figure out what combination of features is going to sell best. They don't have the fastest, best laptop on the market. Mm Mm-hmm. But they have one of the best with the all-around best features set. Not just individual cherry-picked features, but the combination of features, the all-around yep. experience is really good. And I feel like the same thing with all their products. They don't put a super nice screen, but then put try and save money and put a really shitty processor behind it. Or put a 5 megapixel camera on a a plus size phablet yep you know they they make calculated decisions to poise themselves in the market a specific way and i think that they do it pretty good and they are going to get beat up by having not the best you know they're not going to have the best waterproofing and the best camera and the best charger and the best battery life and the best screen and you know they're not going to have that stuff all the time. Well, but speaking of best screens and amazing screens, we transitioned to iPhone 11 Pro because it actually does have a super sick, yeah. you know, Samsung OLED uh, that now hits 1200 nits, which is mm-hmm. super freaking awesome. 1200 nits during HDR content, 800 nits under typical use, yeah, which is still still ridiculous, amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's still Jesus. ridiculous. So it comes in the maxi pad size and the mini size, you know, 5.8 and 6.5. Uh, pretty good resolutions, 2436 by 1125 for the smaller one mm-hmm. and 2688 by 1242 on the larger. So random. Um, comes in a couple, cool. couple different colors. The new one is the midnight green, which I think it looks pretty sick. It reminds me of like a Land Rover. Mm-hmm. Looks pretty cool. Triple lens where you have the same normal and wide angle lens that you have on the base iPhone 11. 11. But we're adding the telephoto back to this one. Add the telephoto back. Um, Both display support uh, DCI-P3. Unless you're disabled in BIOS. Maybe. Interesting. Uh, They talked a little bit. So they called the screen new Super Retina XDR just marketing terms who really cares yeah, it um, is beautiful though yeah the of course the processor is the same one that they have an iphone 11 which is nice that's the same processor seven nanometer uh process on that processor whoa too much process <laughs> <clears throat> they finally include the correct charger with this damn thing a uh, new 18 watt charger comes in the box 50 percent charge in 30 minutes yeah. uh, and the max size lasts five hours longer than its predecessor yeah. well yeah that, and not the smaller be... predecessor the equivalent size predecessor yeah. well we got to see how that plays out the most well just for where it plays out because that's obviously not screen on time because most phones like the best phones last like four and a half hours of screen on time so increasing that by five hours no. nothing lasts that long but if it's a culmination of extended battery life that'd yeah. be really nice they got a 15 percent efficiency increase from the screen alone which i thought was interesting but it's also like but it got brighter. Like you don't get increased brightness with l- better battery life. Like increasing it's, brightness does not help battery life. Yeah. So it's also an interesting yeah. how that's so measured. So we'll, we'll see how metric. it kind of fares out. Um, the other interesting thing is they factory match the camera sensors. So they're all calibrated from the factory and they live update each other. The color profiles, focus points, 
live when you're recording. So uh, you can flip between transition. all three lenses. Oh, yeah, it's super sick. Super sick. Super but smooth. Also, like not in the default camera app, but for app developers, you're going to allow them to all record simultaneously, or at least two to record yeah, simultaneously. You can, record, you can record up to two, all four cameras. Wow. All four cameras on this thing record 4K60. Yep. Thing of beauty right there. Plus, their video recording is always really good, too. It is. It does wide dynamic range. It does oh, yeah. some good stuff. Um, so, they're, of course, priced at $9.99 and $10.99, respectively. Uh, they have some pretty good... They've expanded video editing software Which within cool. the iPhone. Uh, yeah. Looks really good. It comes in a 64, 256, and a 512 gig size. Um, and they've increased the IP68 rating to 4 meters from the 2 mm-hmm. on the iPhone 11. And, of course, it has Wi-Fi 6. Uh, so some changes to the processor have been really interesting. They've included this thing called uh, Deep Fusion, which takes a total of 9 images, 8 of which were taken before you even pulled the trigger, so to speak. Uh, And that last one is a long exposure to where it tries to get as much detail, stitches it all together to give you a extreme high contrast, high resolution, beautiful picture that's machine learned to be the best it could be. Yeah, that's, that's the huge thing right now is like algorithmic computational photography. Like, smartphones are pushing it so hard. That's yeah. the huge thing with, you know, I mean... I mean, VR is doing the same thing. Uh, you, you Instead of pushing the hardware, you push the software to do specific yeah. things to try and make up for the fact that hardware isn't advancing as fast yeah. as it can. Because, I mean, that's the thing is, like, uh, you know, Google Pixels have, you know, Sony sensors that are available to everyone else yeah. just as easily. But it's all the computational photography and all of the algorithmic things that they can do for it. And so it makes it look as good as it does. All their color science and how they do their processing for their photos is like a large part of what the end result is. Yeah. And that's where the industry is going. You can see that with Apple doing the night mode and the fusion and all their computational processing. You know, it's really high push. I mean... Huawei does the same thing on the P30 Pro to get very good results. And it's a very large aspect of, I mean, both what Google's selling for their phones and what these phones are uh, is a big push this year with the cameras, what you can do with the cameras, and the software behind the cameras. I feel like it's the, it's the, the big the biggest, push this year. It's the biggest selling feature, and it's the one you use the most on your phone, other than yeah. cruising social media, to be honest. Uh, is what you share on social media. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, it you is capture. a huge selling point. Yeah, capture yeah. that moment. You always have your phone on you. You always want to have video, pictures of whatever you're doing where, and you know, it, capture those moments, and it's what it enables you to do. And they're, yeah, they're just killing it. Yeah, And honestly, the good. fact that the thing in your pocket can shoot better video than a professional camera could have probably two, three years ago. Oh, yeah is mind-blowing because watching some of the demo reels and stuff that some of the directors put together is, is remarkable. There, yes. there are some small things that uh, you can tell they hit the limits of what they're able to do with just all, a smartphone. But they also do... I mean, everyone does, but they also cheat a lot on those because they put the phones into like ridiculous rigs with crazy lenses and like gimbals and like do all these external things so it's still technically shot on the phone but like huawei has done it too where they like build a ridiculous rig with crazy lenses with their own independent zooms that aren't the phones and do like all this ridiculousness because there there was a the video they showed at 4k 60 going between lenses of like those cars was insane but then someone showed a photo of the camera rig that they used for it and they're like okay that makes more sense can you pull that up? Yeah. Here, find it. So but still, like, well, it's still fucking, it's, it's incredible it. for how it all looked. Yeah, but the fact that you're, I, I understand this marketing, I understand it's used to, you know, push that stuff and say, oh, wow. Uh, Jeez. Yeah, shot on iPhone 11 Pro. 
I mean, that's that's actually not an iPhone 11 though. Mm -mm. That's just the that's just a rig. I actually have to find it then. Yeah, this is actually the one I saw, but this is actually now that I'm looking at it. This is not an iPhone 11. This is an iPhone 8 in the picture that I'm looking at. But this is what they typically do to shoot these videos is use external rigs and latch them in so that they get better results. Hmm. But it still looks fucking amazing. And it's still that those same... Oh, so people were just... Oh, they were responding to this tweet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think it would be interesting to see the process behind how they made those videos. That would oh, yeah. be super interesting. Uh, but they look but, fucking amazing. And oh, yeah. Yeah, iPhone video has always if, been top of the market. If you too. showed that to me, 2007, I would have laughed at you. Just seriously, like, zero chance. Hey, dude, I just showed this on a phone. I'm like, dude. No. You see the picture I just took with my razor? <laughs> I think 600 pixels by 600 pixels. I know, it's absolutely insane. Yeah, so I think, like, all... All the models make great step forward. They're all extremely competitive and like they've really done good this year. And I mean, right now, you know, rumors are for a redesign next year. So if like next year we see a hardware redesign and get USB-C and get, you know, just all those little things that people bitch about and nitpick, mm -hmm. then it'll be like tides will turn and like they'll be exactly where they need to be and it'll be you know so viable from a hardware standpoint and yeah they'll i mean they're doing great and these are very compelling good phones they're gonna do a lot of great things and yeah they're pretty much even out with us on the market so they, yep. it, nothing surprising nothing unique but it's very compelling and interesting for what they released and the one yeah, i'll they tell did you good one thing I am 10% surprised about, no underscreen touch sensor for a fingerprint. Oh, fingerprint reader? Yeah. Missed it. Yeah, I think... But the, the I think it's giving them a selling point for next year if they do a refresh. Yeah, so the things, just in general, to wrap it up, the things that they weren't did announce that were expected, uh, people were hoping for noise-canceling AirPods, those didn't get released. Uh, people were expecting reverse wireless charging so that you could really? use your phone to charge your AirPods because they support mm, wireless. Okay. And that's something that Samsung's done for a couple of years. So it's like a market, you know, equalization thing since mm -hmm. so many other phones do that. Um, and it will let you charge your AirPods on the go. So people were expecting that. That didn't materialize. And there's also, apparently, there's data and software for leaks of a Apple tag, which is like a tile NFC, like Bluetooth tag to mm -hmm. locate devices with. Mm. Um, so that's leaked in software, but that didn't materialize. Uh, no new Google Home. Oh, not Google Home. No. <laughs> Google Home. Friggin' um, HomePod. So no new HomePod, no new smaller HomePod, no new HomePod ecosystem, no HomePod devices. Yeah, I didn't expect any of that. You know, AirPod, AirPower is long and dead. It is, yeah. So there's, yeah, there's still a lot that was expected that wasn't announced. Or like another thing that people are crossing their fingers for was higher refresh rate on the screen. Mm. That's something that a couple phones have been doing uh, this year and last year. Uh, that are supposed to be pretty awesome. Because um, they're doing it on the iPad Pro, so I wouldn't be surprised if eventually get down to it. But, I mean, it may just be a limitation of the OLED, though. Well, uh, like the um, ROG Phone 2 is an OLED, and it's 120 native. Hmm. But then you also have, like, battery life concerns with that. I mean, that has a monster battery in it. But a lot of them are like, so Razer phone is an LCD that's 120, ROG phone 2 is 120 OLED, um, Oppo, I know Oppo, friggin' OnePlus, who's owned by Oppo, uh, OnePlus 7 Pro is 90 hertz OLED, and then the Pixel 4 is expected to be a 90 hertz LED, OLED as well. I could see 90 hertz. I don't really see, I don't know, since they're pushing so much more gaming. I could also see your point, so uh, it's 
I get, I get the appeal. Mm-hmm. I don't. I think it's also ten percent pointless to yeah. have that type of refresh rate on a phone. Yeah, from, what be, but, from the hands-on impressions, it's supposed to be awesome. I know, but I, know. I mean, those are all those small little things. You're like faster wireless charging, faster charging. Um, yeah, faster refresh rate. Those are all the now all the little nitpick bullshit things that next year we can look forward to. Yeah, potentially. hopefully, hopefully. So, but they did good, and I'm, I like them. Apple. I'm impressed. They, yeah, they did all right. You did a good keynote. A um, couple of critiques I have. Uh, oh, I I felt like the Apple Watch saving my life bit was a little overplayed <laughs> like come on like it's a cool thing to kind of like slip into a, like a little video but not have a dedicated video that that felt a little pushed um, yeah so I, I wouldn't do that but also a big thank you to you just talking about the keynote streamed onto YouTube <laughs> thank you for that about Damn time. I mean, I watched it on Chrome. Yeah, it wasn't like quick time. Like, I didn't have to do a quick time runtime. It wasn't dot, a dot MOV. Like, I didn't have to go to Apple's website on Edge or Safari <laughs> to watch it. Like, I didn't have to own an Apple device to watch it. Like, that, that yep, had I been watched it on YouTube, for a couple of years. on Chrome. Like, yep. If you want to get Thank your stuff you so out there, much. Be where the people are. I know. It's like, oh, let's stream this to only the people that already own our products. Like, what? Yeah. But yeah, no, good job, Apple. Like, Thank you. Successful year. Good stuff on all the products. Phones are... Yeah. Phones are good, and you've stepped up to YouTube. No, you did nothing that I'm disappointed with. Yeah. Other than USB-C. That's disappointing. Forever. Yeah. Like, you had such an opportunity. And we still do. You blew it. iPad Pro, USB-C. Start trickling down. Dude. We can only hope. So, join us next time as we dig deep into Nerds Podcast. Dot dick. <laughs>